Okay, let me show you what I've got going with this thing. 12 volt power supply in the corner, frequency generator. I'm using the frequency generator to turn on and off a solid state relay. I had originally purchased that to use as the trigger for the coil, but it's a DC relay and it requires a clamping diode on the load side, so I was, use, I was losing half my signal. So I decided just to use a standard, I've got a four pin double throw relay there. I originally had a automotive relay there, but I let the coil run for seven days. The relay cycled over three million times and it seemed like it was getting a little bit tired, so I bought that relay instead, 12 volt power supply, just running the coil on the inside of the relay. I wanted to keep the contacts of the coil electrically isolated when the coil fires. What I have on this side is I have a spool. It's 28 gauge. There's about a thousand feet of wire on that just sitting on a wooden dowel. I'm using that to slide up to the end and just get it taking a scope pattern off of that. The other thing I was doing is, is on this side of the coil, I also have an iron core. So I can slide that on and take a scope pattern off of that side of the core also. I've got a amp clamp hooked up to the primaries or the primary coil with a multimeter. Amps aren't that great yet, but I'm working on that. Um, rectifier bridge, standard 1N4007 diodes. I've got that hooked up to my multimeter. And I'm using these leads coming off of it to charge a capacitor. That's just coming off of the secondary windings of the coil. These leads here are what I will call the end of the coil the leads that weren't used and these leads here are the beginning of the coil or the two connections that are being used to trigger the coil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these multimeters and everything over, try to get it set up in one location and uh, give you a demo on this thing. Okay, here's the setup. Meter located in the center is to monitor the capacitor when I go to charge it up. Frequency generator, running solid state relay. I've got that set at 5 hertz right now. I'll turn it on to a 10% duty cycle and we'll play with that a little bit. So I've got the solid state relay just turning on and off the mechanical relay. On this end I have the small little coil sitting on the end which we're going to play a little bit with. Piece of wood here just to keep the coaxial cable out of the way. Got a couple extension leads on the end of the coil and I'll be using these to dump the voltage back into the coil from the capacitor and I've got a couple leads here and these leads I will be using to charge the capacitor. Okay so I'll turn the coil on to a 10% duty cycle and there's my pattern. So what we've got is wrong button, measure uh, 125 on the primary, 164 on the secondaries, and 15.6 volts out of that small little end coil. I'm just using peak to peak as a uh, easy way to measure the performance of the coil. One thing I wanted to show you is, is in the purple there, is that small coil at the end. Look at the ring I'm getting on that coil. Um, that's going to disappear if I change things around a little bit. So let's run that. One other thing is, is once I run the coil for a while, the voltage does go down a tad. Um, it's been as low as 100 volts on the primary. That's when I ran the coil for a full week, uh, but towards the end of the week, it went up to 118. So it seemed to regain a little bit of voltage. I've got a couple of 474 polypropylene caps that I've soldered together in a parallel. So I've got 0.94 of a microfarad. Uh, the polypropylene seem to work the best for this this little test. So what I do is I'm just going to attach that to those end leads that are coming out of the primary coil and you can see I get a voltage spike on the primary and the secondary. So I disconnect it and I connect it. So I get a little bit of rise but the one thing I lose is as soon as I do that I've lost my ring out of that air core sitting in the center but primary and secondary voltage did go up a little bit so I just have to disconnect that let me just uh, reset my 
scope here for a second. I'm going to go to 100 volts on channel 1, 100 volts on channel 2, and i got to put my trigger way, way up. That should work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the leads, and I've tried a ton of different capacitors with this thing, all the way up to 220 microfarads. 450 volts. They all seem to get a good charge in them. I don't go over 30 volts. In fact, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> as high as I go is 20 volts. So I'm just going to take this capacitor. Actually, let me show you the, uh, the multimeter here. And I just want to hook this cap up to the rectifier bridge. This is a 5 microfarad capacitor. And you'll see how quickly I can charge this thing up to 20 volts. I don't want to go any higher than 20 volts because uh, I get too much voltage out of this thing. Okay, so let me bring this up to about 20. Close enough. And I'm going to dump it into the end of the primaries. And let's see what we get. There we go. Okay, so there's my spike by dumping that cap in there. And if I measure, what do we have here? 376 out of the primaries and 496 out of the secondaries and 8.2 volts out of that little coil at the end. Um, when I charge this thing up to 30 volts, I've had the secondaries at 727 volts and the primaries up over 500. So that's why I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm getting up to uh, a little bit too high of a voltage and I certainly don't want to arc out on the inside of the coil and destroy what I have in there. Now, another test I'm going to do is I got to bring my, my voltages back down on this. So channel one, let's go back down to 20. Channel two, back down to 50. There's my original pattern. I got to bring the trigger voltage way, way, way down again. I'll set that at about 40 volts. Now, if I alter the duty cycle and the frequency. First, if I go from 5 hertz down to 2 hertz, I get a voltage increase. So it's gone up just a little bit. So 121 and 160. And if I go back up to 5 hertz again and freeze that, I'm at 107, 142. So I do get a small rise in voltage when I play with the frequency. If I play with the duty cycle a little bit, I do get an increase in amperage out of it, but I get a decrease in voltage. That little beep at the back there is just the amp clamp set on min-max, so we'll try it out and see what we get. If I increase the frequency up to 10, my voltage drops way down on this. I play with the duty cycle. It's at 10 hertz right now, and as you can see, the voltage has been pulled way down, and that's at 10%. So I'm going to pull the frequency back down to 5 again, and I'm going to have a look and see what I've got on my amp clamp for an in max. Let's see what we get out of this thing. Ah, uh, 1.1. So for every one millivolt is one amp of current, so I got 1.1 amps. I've had it up to 1.4 coming out of the primaries, and I haven't even started to play with the secondaries yet. And is there anything else I can do with this thing to show you? Yes, one more pattern. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take that air core that I have sitting at the end, and I'm going to throw it over here on the iron core. I have to reverse the polarity of the leads on the scope because it's on the other side. So, okay, so there is, oh, okay, so there's the 
that third coil in the purple, it's now attached or just slid over the iron core. So we got a clear difference in the the waveform coming out of it. And what am I going to get for voltage out of that? I'm at 104, 140, and 9.8 volts. So that's basically where I am right now. Um, I will certainly keep you updated on any new things that I'm going to try to work with this thing. I went to that four pin um, double throw relay on the end over here. So I can possibly maybe charge a capacitor and then dump it back into the primaries and see what I can do with this thing.